Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and I'm here with a quick run through of how to cut with the scan and cut, how to cut cordon, or cut stamped images with the scan and cut. And I'm gonna, this is my second attempt at the video, I might put up both videos, so if you've seen one, I'm just gonna try to keep this one a little bit more quicker, concise, and hopefully have learned from the first one. So, here I have my scan and cut machine. Your scan and cut machine is going to need enough room for the mat to run forward and backwards through it. So you're going to need about the length of the mat in the front and back of the machine in like that much table space. So it has a pretty big footprint when it's running. When it's not running, obviously you can fold it up more. So my screen, uh, so the plastic cover of the scan and cut is in the down position right now. My machine is off. You can push this screen down. It comes up. So if you need to push it down to store it, that is an option. My screen is up because we're going to use it. I'm going to focus in on the screen for a minute so that we can talk about how to get started. Okay, so here is the screen. It is off right now. You hit the power button. It's going to come on. The bright light is going to make it a little bit tricky to see, but hopefully we can work that out easily. I'm gonna give it a few seconds to load up here. It's gonna kinda show you a couple of the, I don't know, like a little feature thing, but basically you just need to hit the home button. And you can hit that right away. You don't have to let it load up or anything. So here it says, the cartridge and mat will move into the initial position. Keep your hands away from the cartridge, or sorry, carriage. Um, so that means don't be touching your machine. Um, like don't touch the cutting area of your machine right now. So it's okay. It kind of scooches around a bit, gives me two options, pattern, scan. Today I'm focusing just on how to cut out a colored stamped image. I'm not trying to explain any of the other features of the scan and cut. It does a lot of other things. I bought it mostly for the feature of cutting things out or cutting out stamped images. So that's what I'm gonna show you. That's what people have asked me about. I'm going to hit the scan button. I'm going to hit direct cut. But now I need something to actually scan. So we're going to talk about my mat in just a minute. The last thing I want to say before, I have it in color mode. That is because I'm going to cut out a colored stamped image. But honestly, even when cutting out a black outline image, sometimes color gives you better results. So if you scan an image and it's not quite cutting where you want it, it's trying to cut out the eyes or trying to cut off a piece of your critter or, or whatever your image is. You might want to go back, start over, and change from color to black and white or from black and white to color because sometimes it will give you a second, um, the second pass through will be a little bit more accurate. You can change the recognition mode by hitting the tools and you can pick black and white or color. Color is selected by the purple outline which is I see a little bit difficult for you to see through the camera but it is purple. So I want color, I'm gonna hit okay. Now I am ready to scan, but I need to get my mat in there. I need to get my images on my mat. So let's revisit the mat for a second. Here I have my scan and cut mat. It's a little bit hard to see this angle, but I need to choose an angle such that the tripod won't fall. So sorry for any difficulty there. I'll just move this out of the way for now, but you'll need that down, obviously, to cut. My scan and cut mat, this is the one the machine came with. It has a little bit of a bump in it. It's a little bit, um, it's not perfectly flat because when they ship it to you, it's wrapped around the machine and so that has caused a bend in it. Therefore, it is super important to store it flat. Please, please store your mat flat. If your mat is curled, the paper is not going to stick to it as well. You're going to get frustrated. So store your mat flat. I kept the plastic bag the mat came in because this helps to keep hair, dust, whatever off your mat. There's also a plastic sheet on your mat that does the same thing, but I find the plastic bag is another good second layer. So I keep the plastic bag. Take it out of the plastic bag. Then there's the plastic sheet that isn't on top of it. I take the plastic sheet off. I store it off to the side somewhere where it's not going to get, uh, 
like it, there's no it's not going to be like hair on it it's not going to fall it's not going to be crumpled like i put it off nicely to the side so that is a little finicky but you know if you want to take care of your stuff it'll last longer you know that so i have my scan and cut mat I'm ready to adhere some stamped and colored images. This is the Cup of Cactus stamp set from Newton's Nook Designs. They're all colored and ready to go. I'm going to kind of talk about placing it on the mat, tips for if you feel like it's not sticking super well. You can place it absolutely anywhere on the mat. You don't need to place it on the front of the mat or the corner of the mat or anything. You could stick it right in the center of the mat and it would cut fine. I tend to stick it in one of the corners. Just have it. Um, I don't butt it up exactly against the corner. I kind of give it some breathing room. I found that was helpful in my Cricut. I have no idea if it matters in the scan and cut. I'm not even saying you should do it. I'm just pointing that out that that's what I do since I'm usually cutting something smaller than 12 by 12. But it can cut up to a 12 by 12 sheet so you can put it right in the corner and that's totally fine as well. But I'm just going to stick my piece of colored cardstock right down. Now, this one seems to be sticking pretty well. Sometimes a longer piece of paper hits the area of the mat that has the bump in it, and it doesn't stick as well to the mat. There's a couple of tips. I would recommend Googling or looking up on YouTube, searching on YouTube some tips for like, if my, you know, my scan and cut mat isn't so sticky, what should I do? There are videos out there that are helpful. One big recommendation that I have heard is to clean your mat with the baby wipe. And um, Julie Faye Van Balzer says that she represents scan and cut. She represents brother. So if she says to do it, I'm sure it's fine. Um, and try that out. I actually do that occasionally. I don't do it every single time I cut, but I do clean up my mat with a baby wipe on occasion if I'm using it a lot. And it's collected some fibers. Another thing that I've heard people say is you can stick down your image with some washi tape and basically tape your image to the mat, put the tape out of the way so it doesn't, you know, distract from the cutting. But I, you know, wanted to give that a shot as well. I don't recommend washi tape just because for me personally, I've had mixed success with washi tape in general, sometimes it's too sticky and it uh, rips my paper and I don't want to have to deal with that. So instead of using washi tape for these purposes, I've just started using this um, duck painter, or sorry, frog tape, not duct tape, frog tape. Uh, frog tape, it is delicate surface painter's tape. It was originally recommended to, or I originally saw it in Lydia Fiedler, Understand Blues videos um, for a different purpose, but it's my go-to tape. I don't like micropore, I don't like washi, I like this, but that's just a personal opinion. So I have stuck the piece of tape to my hand to get even some more of the stickiness off. Even though it's delicate, even though it's very low tack to begin with, I really don't want it ripping my paper. So now I have my paper down. I'm gonna stick a tiny little bit of washi tape there in the corner, way far away from my images so that it won't affect anything. It's never done any damage to my machine, this thin piece of tape. And I've done this several times. I've heard of several people doing it. Again, I obviously don't represent Scan and Cut or Brother. So, you know, everything is just recommendations from one crafter to another and no guarantees of, you know, anything. You know, it's your machine, use it at your own risk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and check out Julie Faye Van Balzer's videos on the Scan and Cut because she is like the official demonstrator. So hers are probably quite helpful. All right, so I'm gonna pull my Scan and Cut closer so that it has enough room for the mat to go behind and in front of it. Okay, taking down the cover again, putting my mat, like I'm just sort of placing it into the machine, but I have to load it. There's a loading button on the machine. So I'm going to bring up the camera to that loading button and zoom in real fast for you. That top button right here is the loading button. You can hear that noise. That was the machine pulling my mat in. Now the start stop button has lit up. It's now a green lit up button. So. I am ready to hit start and then let it go with the scanning, which will take like, I don't know, a few seconds. So...
make sure again that you have enough room in front of and behind for the whole mat to go through. Even if you only have a little piece of cardstock in the corner, it's going to scan the whole mat every time. It's going to come back through. Scanning is now complete. So I'm going to bring you closer to just the um, screen so I can zoom in on it and we can take a look at what to click next. Okay. Now, it says frame the image. I'm going to use the arrows. I'm going to frame around my colored cactuses. You don't have to get right up next to them. You can give yourself a little bit of breathing room if you want or you can pull it a little bit closer to me, that's fine. I'm gonna say, okay. It's gonna look real closely at that area and ignore the rest of the mat so that it can just detect there for the outline images. Now, I will hit this magnifying button so that you can see it closely with Zoom me. in, just so that it's helpful for you guys. So, I've zoomed in twice. I hit the um, plus button, plus magnifier, and then again. As you can see, it has the images pretty good. It has outlined them. They look like the images they're supposed to. It's trying to get around the little cactus bits. And because this is a cactus image, I'm probably going to experience some problems. Here, it has gone around the cactus little like uh, prickers. What do, you, what do you call the things around a cactus? Sorry, guys. Um, it hasn't scanned those perfectly here. So this is maybe not the best example. Um, what I can do is try to adjust the number of colors and see if asking it to recognize less colors will actually give me a more accurate scan because sometimes that does work. Here it doesn't seem to be having much of an effect. So that's kind of a bummer. So my other option is to go back and try scanning it in black and white instead. Because sometimes when you scan it over, it just scans better the second time around. I could hit home, say delete the pattern, and start all over again. Scan, direct cut, still choosing color because these images are colored. Well, I could give it a try in black and white, see if that helps. All right, let's let it scan. You saw what it was doing before when it scanned it through. I'll take a second here, again, or sorry, more than a second, but you know what I mean. And we'll see if that helps, because this is something that I do. If it's not quite doing it exactly the way I wanted the first time, I try to scan it again, and sometimes that's enough. So I want people to feel like, oh, you know, there are some options, there's some things you can do. Okay, so again, I'm gonna frame up the image. and hit OK. You see that it looks a little bit different right now than it did with the um, color. It's totally fine. It's all working basically the same. So now I framed up the image and I can zoom in on it. And now, if you maybe you can see this more clearly, it's recognizing the edges. It's recognizing the little things that come off a cactus that I don't know the name of and I apologize. But, um, so Scanning it through again by changing a setting helped. And so that's why I wanted to point that out. Um, so I'm going to exit out of the zoom in. You can also up the contrast. Upping the contrast sometimes causes it to see things that it wasn't seeing before and might make it catch a few more of the details. So adjusting that contrast can be helpful as well. I'm going to zoom in again, see if it has recognized any better. So right now, this is definitely better than the time that I scanned it in color. So hopefully that's helpful to some of you who have been having trouble. Now, it's obviously not gonna cut out the pieces in between the cup and the handle, um, which is totally fine that the coordinating die doesn't either. So anyway, now I have it all scanned in, ready to go, um, and I'm ready to cut. You can see here, I have increased the contrast. So that is one way you can sometimes get it to recognize your image better. Now you might notice there's a black line here along the bottom. This black line 
is it is seeing a shadow between where the card stock is and where the mat is. And it's gonna try to cut that shadow. It's thinking that that shadow is an object because it's leaving a dark line. And I think that part of the reason this is happening is because the mat is not perfectly flat. It's the folded one from when I first bought it. And because um, I'm using a really thick cardstock. If you're using a thinner cardstock, it'll probably stick to the mat better, but the thick cardstock, any little lump or bump, it's gonna pop off easier because it's harder to hold down with something that's stiffer. A thicker cardstock is gonna be thick. Thicker cardstock is going to be stiffer. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Okay, so, so I've upped the contrast, which I also felt helped, so I'm gonna say okay. Now, I wanna add a border. I like a border around my stamped images. To get the sort of classic coordinating die border, you wanna hit plus one one time. It's gonna say 0.04. That's my personal preference. So now I'm gonna again hit okay. Hopefully seeing the screen is what is most helpful to you. All right, so I picked my border. I upped the contrast. I zoomed in with the plus magnifier and confirmed that I liked where it was gonna cut. Those black lines are showing where it's gonna cut. I thought that those were pretty good. So I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask draw or cut. I'm gonna select cut. Now, cut is highlighted in purple. It's a little bit tricky for you to see on camera, but it is highlighted in purple and the start stop button has lit up again, which shows me that I'm ready. It's kind of a key, like, you know, a good indicator that you're ready. So I'm gonna hit start and I'm gonna let it do its thing and cut this out and then we can take a look at it. It's gonna be a little loud through here. I'm gonna pull the camera back a bit for that reason. I'm almost out of time on this, so I'll have to start a new video. But um, some people have asked, how does this compare to the Cricut or to the Silhouette? Can't you also cut out stamped images with those. I have heard that you can. I do not have either of those machines, so I cannot say how those machines operate. Just like I can't tell you about Spectrum Noir markers because I personally own Copics. So I recommend you know, taking a look at this video, seeing what you think of the scan and cut, and then taking a look at a video from someone else who's showing one of those machines doing the same things, because maybe if you have them, that's a better option for you since this is quite an investment. So we're gonna take a look at the stamped images. I'm gonna bring the mat over to my traditional workspace. Um, to unload the mat though, you're gonna hit that same button that you did to load it. So the load and unload is the same. I'm gonna say, okay, I'm finished cutting. And I'm gonna unload the mat. And I'm gonna hit home. It's gonna ask if it's okay to delete the patterns. And I'm gonna say, okay, because I'll scan it again next time I wanna cut something and I can power the machine down. I'll see you in my workspace in just a minute. So I have pulled the mat, well not pulled the mat, I unloaded the mat from the machine in the way that it recommends on there. Um, some people are gonna ask what the numbers on the machine are because you can adjust the numbers on the machine. My, my blade depth is five and a half. And as far as I know, that's the only thing that I adjusted. So if there's another number you have to adjust, not sure what it is, you can specifically ask me in the comments and I'll try to find out. But my blade depth is five and a half for 110 pound recollections cardstock. There are people out there who've cut a couple of different cardstocks and can give you different blade depths based on their cardstock and different kinds of cardstock so that you can look for the one that you have and pick the right blade depth. 110 pound recollections, I'm choosing five and a half. That's what's been working for me. It does leave slight marks in the cardstock, um, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick up on, sorry, on the mat, um, not on the cardstock, on the mat. Like you can see the old cutting lines, but it doesn't damage the mat. Those areas of the mat are no less useful and yeah. So anyway, this is cut. Your scan and cut comes with a bunch of tools, but for this, you could use the spatula. You don't really need the spatula for it. But as I said, it tried to cut this little strip along, or sorry, it did cut this little strip along the edge because it saw a shape there from the shadow. I mean, 
like it's kind of silly that it does that, but whatever, it hasn't interfered with my machine working or and hasn't hurt my mat in any way, et cetera, et cetera. So now it's time to see how it cut. I can just pull up the big sheet. As you can see, the washi tape came right off. It's done no damage to the mat, no damage to the machine. Didn't interfere in any way with the cutting, but did help hold it down a little bit. And I only used a tiny piece. I didn't cover all the sides, et cetera, et cetera. So now I can use the spatula to easily pull off the pieces. I think that you could pull them off without the spatula, but if you keep putting your fingers all over the mat, the oils from your fingers will probably make the mat less sticky faster than using the spatula. But that's just a, a thought. And when I store my mat, when I put my mat back, I'm gonna put that plastic piece back over my mat. Then I'm gonna put my mat back in its original bag and I'm going to store it flat. And I said store it flat a bunch of times because I know for a fact that storing it curled up can be a problem and make things less sticky over time or like harder to harder for them to stick over time. Okay, so now let's take a look at the results. Even though there was that detail of these tiny little, I'm gonna say prickers again, but yeah, I guess that's what they are. I don't know, sorry guys. Um, these little things that are coming off the cactuses, it has cut around them all. It has cut a nice border around them. This looks as good as you would expect any coordinating die to look. And you know, from watching me do this, that the first time I scanned it, I did not get this perfect result. And so I fussed around a tiny bit with the settings. I just rescanned it in black and white instead of color. That's an easy thing to try. If you're not getting exactly what you want, try scanning it again in the opposite selection. If you scanned in color, try black and white, try black and white, try color. Um, adjusting the contrast also helped a bit. So again, that's a pretty easy thing to adjust. I know that for some people, using the scan and cut is not going to be as easy as using a manual die cutting machine. And so, you know, that's fine if they if they can't figure it out um, or whatever. I don't I don't want that to sound judgy, but I just mean like if it's not for you, I think that's a better way to say it. if it's not for you. And coordinating dies are great, but for me, I can figure it out. It's relatively simple. I picked up some easy troubleshooting tips, and so I think it's a hundred percent worth it versus coordinating dies. And as you know, I've sold off a few of my coordinating dies, partly to kind of help offset the cost of having a scan and cut now. And I stopped buying coordinating dies for several months to save up for my scan and cut because it is much cheaper in the long run. The amount, I mean, a scan and cut is like 270, I think right now. Um, and it's Prime Day, so maybe we'll get a deal. Uh, but I'll link it in the video description just in case. But I got mine off of Amazon. I paid 240, I got a good deal. And um, to me, 24, two, so 240, that's like 10 die sets at $24. And a lot of die sets are that expensive. Some aren't. So maybe 15 die sets. And then you've bought the scan and cut. So for someone like me who likes to have a couple different stamp sets available, who likes to sell stamp sets after I've used them for a while because I like to get new ones um, and you know sell my old ones at like reduced cost, of course. Um, I really enjoy having it because then I don't have to purchase the dies, lose money on selling the dies, try to sell the coordinating, etc., etc. So it's a good fit for me personally. And hopefully seeing this video and hearing about my experience and hearing my opinions is helpful to you. Many people asked me to do this video. I hope that I did it in a way that was helpful. If you have questions, please leave them in the video description. I will try to answer them if I know. If I don't know, I'll just be honest and say that I don't see if I can point you to a source that might be helpful. Um, and you know, if there's specifically something you would have liked to see in the video that you didn't see, again, you can let me know. I will try to um, maybe do another video that explains it better if that's what's needed. But overall, I think that that gave you a pretty good run through of how to use the machine once it's plugged in. Um, and yeah, so I think that's going to be about it for me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. My channel is not a scan and cut channel. It is um, a general crafting tutorial channel, but still, if you're new, if you found me through this video, check it out. You might enjoy some of my videos. I do six by six paper pad tutorials. I do a lot of card kits. 
Um, if you enjoy my teaching style, that's kind of usually the big thing more than that. Uh, if you like someone's style, I think that's pretty important on YouTube. So hopefully I've been clear and concise. And um, yeah, I'll, like I said, I'll link the, the scan and cut, but also the tape, just because um, I know that not everyone tries it and finding a good tape that doesn't rip your paper can be super helpful. So I'll link that and I'll link the stamp set too, just because like I said, in case you're, you're wondering what it was that I cut. Um, so yeah, hopefully, like I said, that was helpful. I'm rambling a little bit at this point. I'll let you go. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. I'll try to answer any questions that you have.